the force is produced in an element called the yoke. The yoke can also be referred to as steering coils. What you have here are a series of copper coils that when carrying a current produce a magnetic force. This magnetic force acts on these speeding electrons and deflects them towards the top of the screen, down to the corners. It causes the scanning process to occur. When we get back to the classroom, we're going to look and draw pictures regarding the relationship between current, magnetic field, and magnetic force. Now another place that you see this relationship occur is in analog meters. This is called a galvanometer. Now analog means it's got a little vein that goes back and forth versus digital, that's a readout of numbers. When you're talking about an analog meter, you take whatever you're looking at and measuring and you hook it up to these posts. The fundamental principle of a current carrying wire producing a magnetic field is the basis for some very, very serious applications. Now these applications are seen in your world a lot. Two of those applications are in speakers and a TV. Let's talk about the speakers first. When it comes to a speaker, we're looking at a, generally a very consistent design. Okay, we've got what's called the cone, and it's made out of a light cardboard or paper. And that cone is mounted to the outside edge of a frame of some sort. And that allows the, the cone to go in and out, uh, uh, to vibrate against this. In fact, this, this ability to go in and out is called suspension. Now the bottom of the cone is connected to what is called the voice coil. Now the voice coil is a coil of wire, much like we've seen in our demonstrations. Now, these are the connections to the voice coil. These connections connect then up to your amplifier. Your amplifier is what sends the energy signal, the sound energy signal, to the voice coil. Now, sound energy varies sinusoidally, so the current is, you know, sometimes positive, sometimes negative. So the current is always changing within the voice coil. Well, we know that a current carrying wire can produce a magnetic field. Well, that magnetic field relative to the voice coil is perpendicular to the coil. So the magnetic field, the magnetic field it produces because it's sometimes positive, the energy, the current's positive and sometimes negative, that magnetic field will change directions. Okay, it, sometimes this will be north, sometimes that will be north. Well, that interacts, the magnetic field of the voice coil interacts with an external magnet or an external magnetic field. Now this is nothing more than a big, it's just a, a fat chunk of a, of a bar magnet is what it is. In fact, we can see that, that the north pole points to the right into the speaker, okay? And we can verify that on the front end of the speaker right here. Okay, so yep, that's the North Pole. Here's the North Pole. So as the current comes into, into the voice coil through these terminals, the voice coil has a current and that magnetic field is either, it's switching all the time based on the direction of the current. Now the magnetic field produced by the voice coil interacts with the external magnetic field to either repel against or attract to these, this external magnetic field. That attraction or repulsion gets translated, remember the voice coil is tied to the cone. That voice coil either sucks the cone in or pushes it out. So when it comes in, when the, when the cone moves into the frame, it's stretching out the air, rarefying the air. When it pushes out on the air, it compresses that air. And this in and out movement is what creates the sound waves that we hear with our ears. So, the fundamental operation of a speaker is a current carrying wire. Now, speaker design changes, but the underlying principle of the operation of the speaker doesn't. Here's another speaker. Okay, we still have the cone and it's got suspension around the side so it enables the cone to go in and out. And on the back, we have 
a combination of voice coil magnet. Now, this piece of engineering, part of this piece of engineering, is look at the savings of space. Okay, look how deep this speaker is compared to the top speaker. Now, instead of putting the permanent magnet at the end of the voice coil, what was done in this speaker is a circle magnet or a, ma a magnetic ring was put around the voice coil. Well, here is a magnetic ring taken off of another speaker. And you can see that the north pole of the magnet is directed straight through, straight through perpendicular to the ring. Okay, so if I change the ring directions, the magnetic field will change. Okay, so we can see that the ring has a north magnetic pole aiming this way. So this is, this ring right here was taken off of a similar speaker and here's the ring on this one. Now we can use our compass to, to show that the north pole is actually pointed to the left. Well, here's the terminals. Here's the, the terminals that come in from the amplifier getting the signal. It goes around in the voice coil in this in this, piece of, uh, in this piece of the speaker and that varying current produces a magnetic field that interacts with this, elect this external magnetic field causing the speaker to either go suck, be sucked in or push out, therefore either rarefying or compressing the air. So speakers are one way, even the little ones that go in your ear exist off of this type of principle. You have a current carrying wire creating a magnetic field that interacts with an external magnetic field to either attract or repel against those fields. So a current carrying wire has a serious implications and applications to the world that we live in. Okay, well, let's talk next about the TV.